Welcome to Yin Yoga Lifestyle. I am your host, Colette Darville. Cultivating our body's resilience and inner silence and its application to all aspects of your life. Let's become enlightened and enjoy the power of intuitiveness and creativity. You are listening to Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Colette Darville, and this is Yin Yoga Lifestyle. So now let us take a deep meditative breath. Inhale, so. Exhale, hum. In September, we celebrate Menopause Awareness Month. And creating menopause awareness, or as Lori Yacobi likes to call it, getting smart, is one of her primary coaching activities. When she was hit out of the blue with her symptoms, it rocked her confidence, strained her relationships, and made it impossible to find calm and balance in her everyday life. When researching what was happening, she was frustrated by the lack of information, or worse, the widely ranging opinions opinions, and misinformation about menopause. She started a blog as a way to document her experiences and share useful resources with others. Her blogging connected her with several social media outlets related to menopause, where she found time and time again that the stories were the same as hers. Women all over the world being blindsided by symptoms and not knowing where to turn for help. Lori couldn't sit on the sidelines any longer. She knew she needed to be more uh, she needed to be a more active part of the solution. The combination of her master's degree in human resource development, 25 plus years of developing instructional programs and experience as an athletic coach and weight watcher leader led her to menopause health coaching. She spent 4 years learning about menopause, including certifications in the third age women peri to postmenopause and nutrition coaching. These days, she's dedicated to working with women to recognize her symptoms and provide tailored plans to navigate menopause and build a healthy foundation for the many years beyond it. Welcome to Yin Yoga Lifestyle, Lori. Thank you, Colette. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, Now, having a career as an instructional developer what were the things and events that inspired you to become a menopause health coach? Well, um, I actually tried to retire from my instructional design career two years ago. Uh Um, But in being retired, I found that I was really missing having something purposeful to do every day. But at the same time, I wasn't really feeling that inspired to maintain or keep building my blog. Right. So as I continued to follow the social media outlets that I was following, I just kept seeing that women are not well served by the medical community with regard to menopause. And I just had this nagging feeling that I could be more involved. Mm. And so, um, what happened next? So I was on the phone with my old boss and I was talking about our upcoming travel. And he said, you know, Lori, I'm glad that you're having fun and all. But in the 25 years I've known you, you've always wanted to help people. And I hope you don't ever lose that. Oh. So That's... my first instinct, of course, was to ignore this comment and keep on with my <laughs> life. But, <laughs> but literally three days later, I was starting my menopause coaching business. Wow. Um, and I think I chose coaching largely because when I reflected on all those years developing instructional programs and also from being a gymnastics coach and a Weight Watcher leader, it kind of occurred to me that I could sum my life's purpose up in one sentence, and that is to apply my skills to enable others to develop theirs. That's beautiful. So my coaching focuses on helping women gain knowledge about menopause and develop health skills that will see them through this time and to be able to arm them with this knowledge and skill set to support mm-hmm. them through this journey is just incredibly exciting for me. Yeah. And it's a tricky time. A lot of women don't, a lot of women don't know what's happening, do they? I mean, they know of menopause, but they don't, when it hits them, they don't really understand it, do they? 
No, and I think, uh, like I said, that's that's something that you that I just kept seeing time and time again. And I think the really interesting thing is that it it uh, symptoms can hit in your late 30s and early 40s when our hormones begin changing. But not only women don't recognize that that's what's happening to them, but neither do do their doctors. Right. So it just feels like you're going crazy. Yes, and I, I and personally, I couldn't help but be very entertained by the way you write. Uh, I, I, I looked at some of your writing and you have a great sense of uh, humor. <laughs> and um, you really do. Is humor a good part of the coping strategy for menopause? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think that a sense of humor and, you know, experiencing laughter is a really important strategy for health in general. Mm -hmm. But it's really helpful in in kind of creating a more positive mindset about menopause. And in fact, the North American Menopause Society even lists laughter as a key strategy. And I think there's several reasons for that. One is that it it helps bring us closer to people. Uh, It moves us into a more positive mindset. It stimulates our immune system. It enhances our learning and memory. And it helps us cope better with the stressors in our lives. And all of those things are things that we sort of can experience as symptoms in menopause. So, so I really do believe that laughter is an important um, aspect, but at the same time, it's not to say that menopause is a laughing matter because any woman who is struggling with symptoms certainly knows that humor and laughter, you know, sometimes feels like an elusive friend. So to the degree that you can, uh, uh, incorporate some humor and some laughter, I think it will sort of help just right. create a different mindset. And you also, um, uh, you have, you, you sort of have um, something going on with your blog too, in your new website, right? Um, I, I right? do. Can you explain that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I have, um, in, in creating my um, coaching business, I'm actually phasing out the old blog Mm -hmm. Um, But I have ported all of those original posts that have the humor that you were describing into my new website. So uh, that early work is still there. Oh, good, because that's the that's the work I read. And I had a little bit of a giggle here and there. And I actually quite a few giggles. And (laughs) I was uh, Lori is a fabulous writer. And it, for our, all our listeners, and um, quite, uh, quite entertaining. So we will, uh, I, I would encourage you to actually visit her website for sure. Your website shows, um, now this is your uh, previous website, but it, it shows uh, four cornerstones for your menopause health coaching, um, sleep, stress management, nutrition, and movement. Why these areas? Yeah, so you're, you will see these areas in the new uh, website as well, because these are the areas that I coach around. Okay. So I picked these areas because I strongly believe in uh, what I call controlling the controllables. And these are all areas that most of us can control. So making one even small change in one of these areas will not only make a difference in how you experience menopause, but it can also contribute to the your optimum health for the, you know, 25 to 30 years we live beyond menopause. Mm -hmm. And the other interesting thing about these areas is really how interrelated they are. So if you make one change in one area, it typically leads to changes in other areas. So, you know, for example, you're chronically stressed. Well, we know if you're chronically stressed, you're probably not sleeping very well. And when you're fatigued, you have less motivation to go for a walk or take a class at the gym and certainly grabbing some takeout on the way home feels a lot simpler than uh, coming home and slicing and dicing vegetables. So, you know, you start down a, a kind of a downward spiral in one area and it really kind of affects the area, all of those areas. But if you start to, for example, employ some stress management techniques, like even just doing some deep breathing at your desk or going for a walk in nature or taking a yoga class, for example. Ooh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> then we know your cortisol levels will start to return to normal and you're going to sleep better. And when you're more rested, you're going to feel like you have more energy to do any kind of movement, go for a walk. 
and maybe make some more mindful nutrition choices. Right. So, and, what, and once you make those choices, then you start feeling better and then you want to do more, right? Exactly. And, and, you know, I talked about kind of creating a downward spiral, but, you know, just making one small change in one of those areas can really lead to creating, you know, a really positive upward spiral. Yeah. And I recently found um, a frightening description that described menis- menopause. Um, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It, it described Uh-oh. menopause <laughs> as a disease of sorts. It said, treatment can help, but this condition can't be cured. <laughs> Ugh. Was it um, was it the first piece of advice? I mean, what is the first piece of advice you would give to someone beginning menopause? Because I can't believe that this this would be any kind of advice to anybody. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a totally frightening description, and it, it this is precisely why I do what I do because it's the kind of information that I was finding and feeling so frustrated about. Um, and unfortunately, it is sort of a fairly common notion. So, so if we break it down, let's say first, menopause is not a disease. This is a natural life progression that affects 100% of women. And we're learning more and more every year about the best ways to treat the symptoms, whether it be through hormone therapy or other kinds of medicines or supplements or just new information around my four cornerstone areas. So menopause is absolutely not something that needs to be endured. And one of the biggest hurdles, in my opinion, that leads to some of these crazy notions is there's a, there's a tremendous lack of education. And that's both for us as women, as well as our health practitioners. So for example, if we start with looking at women, there was a study done in 2018 where more than 80% of premenopausal women we're only moderately aware of what to expect in mm. menopause. But that same survey found that the more women knew about menopause, the less effect it had on their lives. So, you know, there you go. Knowledge is power, right? Right, um, right. And on the medical practitioner side, only 20% of OBGYN residency programs in the United States provide any kind of menopause education. That's and unbelievable. Those, I know. And most of those <laughs> courses are elective. So there is a big knowledge gap in the medical community as well. So wow. you asked about advice for yes, women I who did. are starting to experience yes. symptoms. <laughs> uh, you know, my bottom line is get smart. And, you know, by for me, what that means is two things. First, just having an understanding that our hormones do begin changing in our mid to late 30s when our periods are still regular. So you can start to experience some of these uncomfortable symptoms in your late thirties and early forties. You know, that even though the average age of women uh, at menopause in the United States is 51.2, the normal range is anywhere from 35 to 60. So that's the first area to get smart about is just to kind of understand the timelines. Uh, And then the second piece is, understanding the broad range of symptoms that our shifting hormones can cause. And there's thir- up to 34 recognized symptoms related to our shifting hormones. Mm. And if you understand that, then that'll give you some confidence that what you're experience is, experiencing is normal and that you're not going crazy. Mm-hmm. But two, it'll arm you with some information so that you can have a more educated conversation with your doctor. Wow. That's really great advice. So what is your future vision for your website and your blog. I mean, you have all this information and I don't want to interrupt you because it's also fascinating. So tell me, what is your vision for this? Yeah, I I am kind of bursting with information because I feel so passionate about this, but um, I really am focused on providing menopause health coaching services. So I'm really working on -on one-on-one with clients to help them understand their symptoms. And then we develop tailored plans that, focus on, you know, easy step-by-step doable actions that they can take in one or more of those four cornerstone areas. Um, But I also want to continue to provide some free information and resources uh, on the website, and I will continue providing my own thoughts and ideas and hopefully uh, make folks smile uh, through my blog. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, So what are some of the things that men need to know about menopause? (laughs) 